this episode, I step out of my comfort zone. Anyway, I'll stick my gadget in here. <laughs> Whenever you gain something, you lose something. And I, and I would love to show it to you, but I can't. You don't look 30. Of course I do. Look, look closer. Expecting your camera to work under those conditions. I don't think that that's unreasonable, that the rage levels are quite high right now. Just keep it together, Gabby. Just hold it together. We would have gone dress shopping, which is something I, I would have really hated. Amanda's gone into the frame. You can just see her there. I don't like sitting on the edge of this cliff. I'm going to be cringing at my complete ineptitude. Like I said, cringe. In this episode, I find myself guilty of enjoying a type of landscape photography that I usually can't stand. But first, it's my birthday. I'm actually 50 years old this month. Can you believe I've been on planet Earth for half a century? So to celebrate, I'm having a sale on my website and you can get 30% off any of my eBooks and photography courses. Shouldn't it be 50% off if you're turning 50? Well, I can't, I can't afford 50%. Um... It's me 30th birthday. Yeah, yeah. 30% off for me 30th birthday. You don't look 30. Of course I do. Look, look closer. So yeah, if you want savings off my eBooks or photography courses, there's a link in the description below. Happy birthday to me for 30th birthday. But you don't look 30 though. Right, let's get on with the rest of this episode where I capture some absolutely book worthy shots. Last week's episode, I was shooting with two medium format monster cameras, but they only had super wide angle primes. And for this shot, I needed something a little bit more intimate. Might as well just get the shot that I actually want with my Sony, because this is 55 millimeter. The others are just too wide. So I think the shot that I want is probably only possible with this. Anyway, I'll stick my gadget in here. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I've got to try and get something out of today. So let's focus on composition, shall we? So I'm going to show you the back of the camera, explain what I've framed up, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then explain how through compromise, I'm going to get the shot that I want. So here's what I love about this composition. I love this dripping cascade that you can see down the left. And then the main waterfall, just off centre. This cliff looks pretty good, but one of the most important features is that bridge. You can only just see a little sliver of the bridge here. So even though I like this shot, it's missing a key ingredient. So I can take this shot. In fact, well, I took it, took this shot a few times yesterday, but I think I can get a better shot if I move that way in this direction, closer to this cascade. And then I'll be able to feature more of that, to me, what is an essential part of the composition, that bridge. Now, it's always a compromise because whenever you gain something, you lose something. So what I would lose, if I go further around here and shoot more in that direction, I'm going to lose this beautiful staircase, right? So what do I want? Do I want the bridge or do I want the staircase? Which is more important? And I, and I believe that the bridge is more important because even if I lose that half of that staircase there to gain the bridge, I've still got that little top part of the staircase. So I think that's a, it's a worthy trade. So I'm gonna go over there and try it out and show you what I frame up and we'll compare it. All right, so I moved around and I think that this composition is way better. Now that you can see the bridge over there, to me, this tells a bit more of a story than what you saw before, which was, is it a bridge? Is it, now you know it's a full bridge. So you can see this pathway, this trail through this beautiful canyon. So I've still got my gorgeous cascade to the left. I've still got a bit of the river in the center. And in fact, I've actually, I've lost some down at the bottom, but I've actually gained another waterfall up there, just off center. So to me, this is a, a much more balanced composition. It's a bit simpler and it makes more of a feature of that cascade. Now, of course, I have lost half of that staircase, but I don't care because what I've gained is worth the loss. 
Anyway, if this shot turns out to be any good, I know, I know it's going to be good. Here's the shot. Now, if you want to learn more about composition, don't forget all of my courses are on sale right now. There's a link in the description. With that shot in the bag, I decided it was time to experiment a little and try a vertical panorama. Now this is the kind of landscape photography that I love, but keep watching and you'll get to see me actually enjoy a kind of landscape photography that I usually hate. Oh, this is quite a nice shot from here, actually. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do one more. <laughs> oh, I really love this composition, and I, and I would love to show it to you, but I can't because of this. This accessory is not supported by the device. <laughs> oh, Sony, why are you like this? But anyway, I'll show you the back of the camera. I'll try not to have a full conniption fit, but the, the, the rage levels are <laughs> quite high right now. But anyway, have a look at this brilliant shot. But no, you get this pathetic, oh no, almost a glimpse of it there. I'm sure you can agree, that was a great comp. And with this soft evening light and this rain, everything is completely drenched. It just looks so moody and, and muted. I like those colours. Oh, just absolutely drag my feet with this. Anyway, if this shot turns out to be as epic as I think it will, <laughs> here's the shot. <laughs> I decided to move a little bit further up the trail towards the bridge, and that's where I finally found my shot. Time to get some well-earned rest in the camper. Well, it's 4 a.m. I have had four hours of sleep and I do have a face like an expired Cornish pasty. Steak and potato if you're curious. And uh, I feel quite terrible to be, to be quite honest with you. But I've got my bulletproof coffee so I'm, I'm perking up a little bit. Uh, did you get much sleep, love? Probably about the same as you. Yeah. And I like about nine hours so What's your face like? Crumpled real skins. <laughs> Crumpled real skins. Kind of like a pork rind. One thing we can eat on this keto diet is pork rinds. I have been loving that. Yeah, but you'll get sick of those. I won't. Here they have two things. They have pork, pork rinds, which are kind of fluffy and light, and then pork cracklings, which are pretty much the same as pork scratchings in the UK. Pretty good, but not as good as the UK ones, you know, but I'm biased. Anyway, the reason why we're up so early is because the forecast was calling for fog here in the canyon. And this is the third day in the canyon. And if I can get a foggy canyon shot with waterfalls and, and green mossy trees and cliffs, oh my God. So I, I just fell in love with that composition and then as we were leaving, I had an idea. And I don't usually shoot these types of shots. These, I think they're called environmental portraits where you put a person in the shot. But I had an idea for putting the missus in a dress and putting her right in the center of this scene. It, it might work, it might not work. So we're gonna stagger down the, the hill in about 45 minutes, just before first light. Because I reckon if we're there, at first light 
there shouldn't be anybody in the canyon. We might have the whole place to ourselves. And then we can just do whatever we want with no pressure, no people on the trail. And I won't be a pest to all the other people on the trail. So that is a plan. So maybe a second coffee and then a plop. And then we're off. Ever since my nasty fall, going downhill was extremely painful. But of course, Amanda had no such issues. I was careful with every step, and this time I actually remembered to bring my hiking pole. Even if your leg isn't smashed up, I highly recommend hiking poles for any kind of downhill hiking. They are a knee saver. Well, so far we haven't come across another living soul, which is brilliant. Still quite dim. I need it to be a bit brighter for this shot, but only a little bit. So I'm thinking the darkness and the earliness will uh, keep most of the crowds away and we might have a chance of getting this shot. But it's a glorious morning, isn't it, love? Oh, it's great, isn't it? Just bird song. And frogs. Frogs and the sound of the river. Just magic. I didn't waste any time setting up my camera, and the camera didn't waste any time triggering my camera rage. Okay, so I've framed up almost exactly the same composition that I shot last night with nobody in the shot. And uh, it, it, it just looks glorious in this dingy, rainy light. It's such a moody shot. And I've done a test shot to, to place Amanda in the center of the frame. Uh, at very, very shallow depth of field, shooting at f1.8. So here is that test shot. So I really like that test shot, um, but we need more light because even though I do like the f1.8, I do kind of want some of the background to be in focus as well. So I don't want to shoot that wide open. So we're going to stick around, wait for it to brighten up a little bit and then try this shot again. And uh, also Amanda's brought her umbrella, haven't you, love? So we'll try that as well. I don't know if that'll work. It might overcomplicate things and it might block some of the beautiful background, but um, quite happy with how that test shot turned out. Just need a little bit more light. Now, I'm not an unreasonable man, but it seems to me that simply asking your camera to be functional in slightly humid conditions. Not, not one single raindrop, nothing touching the camera. The camera is completely dry, just a bit humid. You know, expecting your camera to work under those conditions, I don't think that that's unreasonable. You know, I think that that's, that's standard for most camera systems. That's what we're dealing with. I'll just check my composition. Oh yeah, that looks quite good actually. Oh no, <laughs> there you go. Can't see my composition or any of my controls. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows what kind of shot I'm getting? Ah, oh, I love it. Just challenges, you know, challenges. To cheer me up, Amanda gave me some random movements, which I can't quite describe. I, I don't think you would call it dancing. All I can tell you really is that I like it. And it worked, you know, it, it did actually cheer me up. Anyway, even though I'm currently experiencing uh, camera rage. I'll do my best to try and talk you through this composition without pushing this thing off a cliff. All right, so what I love about this composition, and I'm just gonna have to keep hitting this because my camera is just freaking out. What I love is that this shot takes you on a journey. I absolutely love images where you can just step right into the image. It takes you on a journey, it tells a story. And of course, for people who don't have the luxury of hiking up this trail and walking behind a waterfall, well, don't worry, I'll do it for you and take a picture. It makes you feel like you're here, I hope. Anyway, th th this is driving me, this is driving me insane. Oh, oh, God. Just keep it together, Gavin. Just, just hold it together. Right, so what you have is the cascade in the center with the bridge behind it. Now, normally I would hate to occlude or block a really important element such as that bridge, but because this waterfall or this cascade is just like a thin veil, 
you can see through it. So it, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You can see what's in the background. And even though this is cutting right through the center of it, it's so soft and it's so atmospheric that it's not a problem. And then just off center to the left, of course, you have the trail, which hopefully you can see it on this phone, but it kind of just weaves around and then up this staircase off to the bridge. So you can see where you're going on this, this little journey. I'll just brighten it up a bit. There you go, I'll brighten it up so you can just see that trail off into the distance. So you've got everything. You've got beautiful colors. You've got a moody landscape. You've got a journey. You've got a waterfall, two waterfalls really, because you've got this dripping down, this curtain of water, this, these ribbons. And then if I just darken this down a little bit, you can see in the background, you have this creek carving through this canyon. I, honestly, I could not ask for better. Anyway, so I have that shot without a person in it. I love that shot, I'm happy with it. That is going in my next book for sure. It might even be a book cover, I don't know. But when I saw this shot last night on the computer, I just thought it needs a person right there. Just, this is a central focal point. So who better than my beautiful wife? Oh yes, major brownie point scored right there. Oh, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like sitting on the edge of this cliff. And it's not like I've got the capability to jump in the river and chase after my gear, so... Makes me a little bit twitchy, I'm not gonna lie. Now, when the light gets just about right, and then Amanda goes in to do this little bit of modelling, I know that the portrait photographers out there watching this are gonna be cringing at my complete ineptitude. Like, I have no idea how to pose somebody, you know, the certain gaps in the legs, whether they should be looking up to the right. I, I have no clue. <laughs> Neither do I. But I'm in good hands <laughs> with my model. <laughs> like I said, cringe. The other thing I, I should have done, if I, if I knew I was gonna go for this kind of shot, is we would have gone dress shopping which is something I, I would have really hated. <laughs> I would have suffered, but I would have suffered it for the right color, the right shape. You know, this is just what we had on hand. So again, I know you portrait photographers, you'll be, you'll be cringing, but uh, you work with what you've got, don't you? Well, I reckon we're about 10 minutes out and then we're gonna get this shot. What's this? Oh, that! That is like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. How are you going? Like and subscribe. Did you know that only about 30% of my subscribers get a notification when I put new videos out? Something weird's going on there, isn't it? But anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, Hit that red button and uh, don't forget to tickle me bell. All right, so Amanda's gone into the frame. You can just see her there. And I'm just gonna focus on her. I think that's focus. And we've got a quarter of a second at F1.8. So, okay, reach out for it. Get that shot. Oh, two second timer. Okay, let's see if that's sharp. Punch in. No, not sharp at all. So I'm gonna to have to focus manually, which is uh, gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna turn this off and concentrate on what I'm doing. said I hated this type of landscape photography, but I guess hate's a bit of a strong word, and when you try it, it's actually not that bad. As artists, it's sometimes good to try something that takes you out of your comfort zone and challenges your preconceptions. Well, I'm delighted with how those shots turned out, but I reckon it's time we should bugger off before the hordes arrive. Yeah. And should we move on to our next location? Let's get going. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please give it the old thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to tickle my bell. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.
What's your face like? Like a soggy flapjack. <laughs> it is a bit moist. Do you like having a <laughs> Do you like having a camera shoved in your face at four o'clock in the morning? I'm sure you've seen worse. in the morning love it's people trying to sleep there's probably some people still up with hangovers <laughs> well i reckon we're about 10 minutes out love <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible well i reckon we're about 10 minutes out and then we'll try and get this shot <laughs> what? what was that right well i reckon we're about 10 minutes out and then we'll get <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I reckon we're about 10 minutes out and then we'll get this shot. Yeah. <laughs>